Hi everyone, welcome back to Monday's live ukulele jam. I've missed you all, it's been a long time. Um, Kana Kapila with me, Matt Stead. Um, as with every week, there's always a bit of buffering at the start of the video. So in a minute, I'll explain how this all works. I'll talk through the song sheets. We'll see who's here um, and I'll talk about the schedule of the next few weeks as well. But I thought just to ease us into it, for some reason it likes it when I just play a song gently just to get everything going. So just whilst the buffering settles down and perhaps Esther, you could explain this in the comments. That'd be great. Um, I'll just play a little bit of a song, just something simple and instrumental just to just to test the connection and if you could let us know how the sound is as I play this that'd be absolutely fantastic everyone cheers <laughs> <laughs> something like that hopefully if that's done its trick the the buffering will have settled down and as if by magic we're all good and ready to go i hope Woo. how are you all doing tonight i hope you're all keeping well i'm back from my travels you'll be um you'll be glad to hear i've missed you all i always miss my monday can of peeler when i've been away so it's good to good to be back um, don't forget, you can still download your sheets. Um, they're available for free um, via the link in the description or in the comments here. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Esther. So, uh, oh, Esther's got a posh binding machine. <laughs> Love it. Hi, Betty. Thanks for my tip earlier, Betty. Really appreciate that. Hi, Peter. Oh, it's just settling down a bit. Hopefully we'll be there in a minute. Um, so I'm back from my, I'm back from, my, hi Lisa, back from my holidays um, in Norfolk. And look, I'll see if I can get a photo. I found my, hang on, let's see, butterfly, my swallowtails. These were what I desperately wanted to spot when I was over in Norfolk, the swallowtail butterfly. They're only in like four different fens in Norfolk that you can see them and I've never seen a swallowtail my whole life despite being a butterfly enthusiast um, because it's miles away it took kind of seven hours to drive there on the Saturday but it was well worth it so I got my swallowtails I've got another one here there we go this is quite a nice one look at that cute face <laughs> they're absolutely gorgeous butterflies Britain's biggest butterfly which is interesting Peter I don't know if you saw at Hutchinson's bank you've got uh you've got a butterfly back from the dead the um, black veined white which went extinct in the UK in 1925 they think someone's released them in Croydon so so that's cool so yeah oh thank you guys it was a little bit rough and ready my freight train but I hope you enjoyed it as well thank you guys fantastic so tonight we're going to have songs by Harry Nilsson. We've got The Shins, a really cool indie band. Uh, what else have we got? We've got The Beatles. 
Um, we've got Mama Cass, all sorts of good stuff coming your way. So I'm really, really excited to um, share this all with you. Um, as always, the boring bit at the start, if anyone's interested in sending me a tip to help with the running costs of the channel, um, there's a link down here, which I keep on the screen that you can donate to, um, or you can follow any links in the description um, or the comments. And I'm really thankful for everyone that supported me. It really helps to keep the channel going. So thank you, guys. So let's get on with the good stuff. I'll have a break in the middle and I'll talk a little bit about some of the things we've got coming up because we've got some kind of exciting things um, in the pipeline for you. In fact, a really exciting one at the start of July, which I can't wait to tell you about. But I'll, I'll, I'll let you wait for that just a minute. Let's just have a quick look at the sheets and I'll just explain how things work. We're actually going to start with um, Harry Nilsson's song. I'm going to fast forward in our sheets to everybody's talking. So how these sheets work, I know loads of you, for loads of you, that you already know all this stuff, but it's good in case we've got anyone that's new. Hi, David, by the way. Hi, Karen. Hi, Beth. Hope you're keeping well. So what we have here are our boxes. Oh, let's just see. I've got a message off Esther. I just want to check. Do, do, do. Oh, yeah, Beth, if you do fancy joining in, don't worry, it's ever so simple. So feel free to um, stick around and just have a little try. Um, some of the songs are a little bit tricky, but some of them are really simple. This first one has some really tricky sounding chords, but they're actually really easy peasy to play. So I'll, I'll kind of talk you through how to do it. Thanks for the heads up, Esther. So how this works is we have these boxes with what we call the Nashville numbers. And the Nashville numbers mean that we just give chords numbers from where they fit in a key. It's kind of like counting up. I like to think about it as kind of like counting up on your fingers. So every key has a palette generally of seven chords and the composer can choose from that palette. They only tend to use two or three, four or five chords, sometimes all seven. And if we number those chords in any key, so for instance, in the key of C, we'd have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and we could, could, could go on again and again and again, right? So we number the chords. So the one chord in the key of C is C. If those chord numbers are uppercase, it's a major chord. If it's lowercase, they're a minor chord. And if it's something funny like major seventh, you can see it there. Now, if you notice this song, everybody's talking, if I make it really big on the screen, this bit in the chorus especially, you'll notice that composers tend to follow chord patterns. There are certain progressions that we've found over the years that just kind of fit together really, really beautifully. And the one that Harry Nielsen uses in Everybody's Talking is one of the most famous patterns of all time. It's called a 2-5-1 progression. That just simply means the second, the fifth, and the first chord from a key. And in this case, we're in the key of C. Now, the second chord in any key is played as a minor. The fifth is played as a major or sometimes a dominant seventh. But don't worry about that for now. And the one chord, a major. So you can see there the chorus of this song is just simply a 2-5-1. So this would be a great one to play and practice playing without sheet music. So 2 being D minor, C, D, OK? Then we have 5 being G major, C, D, E, F, G, 5. Then we're back to 1, C. And then finally, to create a bit of drama in the chorus, we also have a C7. <laughs> David's got it right. Here come the fingers. Oh, and Karen. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So that means the chorus. I'll talk about strum pattern and stuff in a minute. We have this. Uh, where are we? Let me just find my words. Where are we? There we go. I'm does something interesting. We've got D minor, G. Then we've got 
lots of different types of C chord, a C, a C major 7, and a C dominant 7, and a C6. The nice thing for us is they're really, really easy PC to play. The C chord we know already. C major 7, we just play the second fret. C7, we play the first fret. C6, no fingers at all. And each one of those boxes is a measure, or four beats in this case. So because there's two chords in each of those last few boxes, you count one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Two on each, right? As simple as that. It's really neat, isn't it? Uh, this system, Nashville Numbers, has been used um, for years and years and years. The name comes because on the grand, in the Grand Old Opry in Nashville, um, a lot of old country bands and old time bands, they used to play in what they call scratch bands, and a lot of the musicians had never met before. So the singer was able to say, this song's in the key of C, the chorus goes 2 five, one, and everyone knew how to play it. It's really cool, isn't it? Let's have a look at a couple of other things that happen in this one. The intro is nice and easy because we have a C chord going to C major 7. C chord just here. And then we have C major 7. We just do that twice. Nice and easy peasy, love and squeezy. The verse carries on doing that for the first bit, four of each. Everybody's talking at me I don't hear a word they're saying Then we've got the chords from the chorus Only the echoes of my mind Then we do that again People stop staring I can't Straightforward this one. Now let me talk about the strum pattern. Now you know me if you've seen any of my YouTube videos. I don't like to get too caught up in strum patterns because I think they can be quite mechanical and kind of make people a bit nervous and play a bit like robots. Whereas we want to be all lucid, don't we, and kind of smooth with our playing. But sometimes they're helpful just to give an idea of a rhythm. And this pattern I'm actually going to use on I think at least three of the songs tonight. And it's really, really simple. Thanks, Beth. It is, isn't it? It's really cool. I love things like that. Just simple systems. And when it becomes clear, it's just so brilliant. Um, so this is the pattern we're going to do. Really simple. And I'm going to go really slowly. I'm going to chuck. So I'm going to put my fingers over the string so it makes this noise. OK. And I'm going to want you to copy back with me. Down, 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 up. All right. You can think of it as one and two and a for now. I'll talk about the counting in a minute. Or walk, 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 running. What we're going to do is we're going to do that twice now. Walk, 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 running. Walk, 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 running. Okay. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up. Now this pattern, as I say, happens in loads and loads of the songs. Now you have to play it quite quickly. So if you struggle with this, I'll give you an easy um, option in a second. But it will sound like this. Down, 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 up, down. And if you like numbers to count, one, two, uh, sorry, one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four and a walk, 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 running, walk, 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 running, walk, 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 running, down, 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 down. So you'll do basically one of those patterns per measure. sound in strum pattern but really really simple now if you struggle with that and you're worried about kind of counting your ups and downs and it throws you keep it simple just strum the down strums one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and 
And again, I'm just strumming with the nails of my right hand very lightly, all down strums. One, two, three, four. Oh, sorry. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Simples, right? You could do this. You've got. Fantastic. And that's it. That's what we're going to do on loads of these songs tonight. You'll soon get used to that pattern. Now, a couple of other things. If you want to, you can do a wee bit of a solo on this one. Only if you want to. And this one's in the key of C major. So we can use the C major pentatonic or A minor pentatonic. And this is a neat one in that it falls on the A string. You can play an open A and then all of the dots on your A string. So that would be open, three, some ukes have a dot there, some don't, five, seven, ten, twelve. You can even play this one right up here, the fourteenth, if you can add that in as well. You can play those notes in any order. So when we come to the instrument, you can try a little bit of a solo, really simple. Now I've done I've done a really um, simple recording here. I hope you'll hear this. Sometimes it's not quite loud enough. Let me see if I can turn it right up. And just to give you an example, just keeping it simple, just hitting the dots, you could do something like this. Let's see if I can get this to play. There we go. Go away keyboard. There we go. Just bear me a second. There we go. A keyboard's appeared on my screen. I didn't want it. There we go. Just hit those dots, look. You can do the same thing on the E string. Only on the E string, make sure you don't hit the 7th fret, hit the 8th fret. And you can start to build a really little rudimentary solo. And I love people to have a go at soloing. I think it's a really nice way to kind of play you communally. Um, and it's something that I really want to encourage. So just have a load of fun with that. There are some sheets on the link in the description where you can download all of your scale charts and you only need to print them out once. You can use them every week, but just have a little bit of fun. If you don't feel confident at soloing yet, you don't have to. You can just um, hit, the, hit, the, hit the chords and strum along with me, okay? So in terms of the structure on this one, um, we have verse, chorus, then we're going to do a verse instrumentally, and then another chorus, and then another verse, and then finally the outro. And the outro, you'll notice, is just that 251 D minor G C again and again and again. All right, so I think you'll see you'll soon get the hang of this one. Let's give it a go. We're going to take it nice and easy, and then we'll have a little break at the end, and you can let me know how you got on, guys. So let's see. I'll um I think I'll come in and no, I'll get, I'll stay here. I think you can just about yeah, you can see what I'm doing there, can't you? Here we go. So remember the intro, we're doing C major to C major seven. Okay, we're gonna do that twice. One, one and two. Yeah. 
Dip it over the ocean like a song. Let's do an instrumental verse. So isn't that a sweet song? And ever so simple, you know, those chords, they sound so sophisticated, don't they? The, the, the C6 and the C major 7 and everything. But you realise, not so bad, actually, once you get into it. And they're following that really common 2-5-1 pattern. And that 2-5-1 pattern is the basis for so many songs, particularly jazz stuff. So absolutely absolutely great stuff let me know how you got on guys give us a like or a heart or, or whatnot oh and that reminds me um if you get a chance after you've watched this um if you could like the actual video not just the comments the um if you could like the video and um, perhaps share um and subscribe it just really helps with my numbers and that's good you get picked up by the youtube algorithm and all that what's it for malarkey so um yeah <laughs> David, how would you get on with that solo? <laughs> oh, guys, I've missed it too. It's it's felt like ages. Um, it's I I always miss Kenny Capilla, and I always it's so nice to get back to you. So um, yeah, and of course, yeah, I'll see some of you guys in real life soon because um, I'll be at the Grand Northern Ukulele Festival in two weeks' time, so I might see some of you there. Um, if anyone's coming to Gnuff, um, I'm going to be performing Friday night. And I'm going to be running my uh, two ukulele walks where you can come and walk with me in some beautiful places. Um, beautiful Beaumont Park in Huddersfield. And then we're going to go up Castle Hill, see views of the Pennines and everything. Bit of ukulele meditation or kind of capilla thrown in. So exciting. And then, of course, it's my retreat. Um, if anyone's interested, we've had some return tickets. So we've actually got some last minute tickets available for the retreat. So it, it did sell out originally. So if you missed out and you'd like some, um, have a look at the website. And I'll talk more about that in a break. So, yeah. Oh, thanks, Esther. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, guys. Me too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. OK, then. How about then? Let's have a look at the Beatles. Now, this next one's really interesting um, because we're going to do a song called The Word by the Beatles. 
And this one follows something called 12 bar blues. So quite different from the 2-5-1 combination that we just played. But it's quite a, a quite a smart, simple system to follow through the 12 bar blues because they're really formulaic. Of course, the Beatles like to muck about with things, so we did. They did muck about with the format slightly, but it's not not too bad. I'll talk you through it basically. So um, this is the one we're going to look at next. By the way, guys, the word I'm doing these slightly out of order from our sheets because I'm quite arbitrary with the sheets when I do them. I just um, I send the sheets over to Esther and Karen. Thanks as always, guys, for all your help, and they they present these beautiful charts for you. Um, and when I send all my scribbled notes and everything, I don't think about what order they're going to be in. And it's only afterwards, sometimes I think, actually, it would be easier to start with that one and then this one. So that's why I've rearranged them a bit tonight, so it makes a bit more sense. So, um, yeah, you'll, you'll see as we go. So this one, 12 bar blues, what does that mean? Well, 12 bar blues means there's 12 bars or measures. And remember, measures or bars are just kind of chunks in music. They tend to be broken down into beats of four or three. In this case, common time, so four beats. So that means, you, and you can quite clearly see it on this one, if I make it really big, look, and bring it over here, can you see that we've got three rows of four measures? So each chunk being a measure. And of course, we know from our mathematics, A, A levels, O levels, GCSEs, whatever you do, diplomas in America, um, we know that three lots of four is 12, right? So 12 bar blues, that's how it gets its name. And 12 bar blues tends to follow quite generic patterns. We tend to have the one chord for four, either two or four measures normally. There, and that one chord is the one that kind of sets you off on a journey. You kind of feel safe and resolved on that one. Then for a bit of a change, I always call the four chord a change chord, don't I? We have the four chord for a couple of measures, then we go back to one. Now generally in 12 bar blues, in the last line, we have the five chord going to the four chord to the one chord. It's kind of like a long resolution. The Beatles mucked about this. We have something a bit unusual down there. All right. <laughs> What is all this about pants? <laughs> I've missed it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I've got, I've, but there's a concurrent joke um, with Canicopee because um, one of the first things I did when I were, learned ukulele is I used to play the song Pants, which is a song I made up to go along with a children's book. And I've been promising to do it. I'm going to do it at the retreat. I've been promising to do it for years. Um, but yeah, that's where the punch jokes come in. But I don't know what this is. No pants, no problem, no shirts or shoes, no shirts. <laughs> Love it. Anyway, right, back to, the, back to this song. So this song is in the key of D. And D has sharps and flats, so all sorts of things going on. But the nice thing is that the chords that we use in the key of D in this song, has they fall on 1, 4 and 5, which are no sharps and flats. So nice and easy. So our one chord is D. Instead of playing it as a D major, though, we're going to play it as a D7. And you'll see there's a number seven written next to our Nashville number, so you know that that's what's going on. And this happens a lot in blues music. We play seventh chords rather than major chords. It's just a common thing to do. You can play your seventh like this, or you can play a Hawaiian D7 like this. Both are perfectly valid. This one here or this one here. So the whole first line of the word is just that chord over and over again. Now I'm going to give you a strum pattern in a minute and I'll talk you through it, but we can basically do that same strum pattern we're just doing it a minute ago. And if we count, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. That's the first line. Then we go to the four chord, D, E, F, G, in this case, and we're playing this as a G7 as well, for two measures. And then we go back to a D7. So that, if I just play that in time for you so you can have an idea. Say the word, oh, let me get my key, hang on. There we go. 
takes me a while sometimes. Say the word and you'll be free. Say the word and be like me. Say the word I'm thinking of. Have you heard the word is love? So really simple, just one and five, really simple. Then the Beatles mapped about rather than having the five, four, one progression, We've got this four, five, three, four, but it's nice and easy to play. We've got a G chord, followed by an A major chord, two, one, zero, zero, an F chord, just move your finger down one, back to G, and then finally we go back to the one chord. So we get this, it's so fine, Sunshine, and we're back to it's the word love. Two beats on each of those. Sunshine, ba ba. It's the word love, and then we're back to that D seven as well. Now I am just strumming that exact same rhythm that we were doing from um, the Harry Nilsson song. And um, everybody's talking. Down, 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 down. One, two, three, and a one. Sorry, I've got to get the counting right because it's a bit more elongated. One and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four. Down, 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 up, down, down. I'm only giggling because I'm looking at your comments. It's worth joining the live chat. It's always fun. <laughs> Some fun things going on tonight. Now, I was putting a little chuck on two. One and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four. Now, to add that chuck, all you need to do is relax that hand. One and so I'm doing squeeze, squeeze, release. And a squeeze, squeeze, release. That creates this. Hear that percussive um, sound. You can do it just with downs as well. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and chuck and two and chuck like that. All right. Don't sweat it too much as long as you're doing that pattern and you can still just do your downs as well. Absolutely fine. Say the word and you'll be free. All right, so don't feel you have to make it super fancy pants. Just do whatever suits you. You can also do the Hawaiian seven. Say the word and you'll be free. So don't feel you have to do that, that, um, that tough D7. Yeah, David, I love the word. This one, um, this is really interesting, actually, this song. And um, uh, Karen, in a fascinating fact, reminded me of something really fascinating, that um, the band The Shins, who are one of my favourite indie bands of all time, we're going to cover one of their songs later on in Canna tonight. And they did a version of this song for a children's television programme called, what was it called? I've got it in my notes here. I think it's something like the bugs, wasn't it? The da, 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 da. yeah, the beat bugs, the beat bugs. It was this kids TV program. My kids were into it when they were younger, where they they kind of had this animated series, and then it was kind of like a musical, and all the songs would be Beatles songs, so they were called the beat bugs. And they got all these different bands to record different versions, and and the Shins were one of them. And they did this song. It must have stuck in my subconscious because I'm I'm sure there must be a reason why I linked those two tonight. But how perfect, right? Um, but yeah, it's one of my favourites. It's from Rubber Soul, isn't it? Which is I wrote down the year somewhere as well. Yeah, 1965. It's actually my favourite Beatles album. I love Rubber Soul. Rubber Soul is just like. I kind of feel like it's the first time all the songs just fit together perfectly on a Beatles album. Um, Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys was blown away by it as well and kind of pushed him on to do Pet Sounds, didn't it, which was interesting, which in itself pushed the Beatles on to do Sgt Pepper, which is kind of interesting again. Anyway, 
So that, that's pretty much it basically. We just have that D7, just over and over. G7 for a couple of second line, back to D7. You're so fine, sunshine. Sometimes I like to just do those as down strings. Just breaks up the sum and then you're back into your string. Now the refrain is kind of, it, sometimes it's referred to as the chorus for this one, but again, quite an unusual set of chords. So just follow the chords rather than the Nashville numbers if you want. The Beatles used to use a lot of flat chords, something called the mix and idiom mode. Don't worry about the, the theory behind it. But we have this D chord, normal D major. In the beginning C, I misunderstood F. But now I've got it G, the word is good. And it's that simple, that's all it is. The chorus or the refrain is just one line. Let's practice that again. Two, three, four, D, C, F, and G. Nice, then we're back to the D7. Back to that one. Okay, so that's the chorus, not too bad, that one. Nice and simple, relatively straightforward, that one, isn't it? Now, this one, we've got an instrumental right at the end after verse four. And for this one, we're going to use a blue scale. Because we're in the key of, um, we're, we're playing a 12 bar blues, it makes sense to do a blues scale, doesn't it? So I'm going to show you that um, blues scale um, in just a second. First of all, I'm just going to answer a quick question from Karen. I love questions, by the way, guys. If you ever have a burning question you think I'm too embarrassed to ask, um, don't, because normally everyone else is thinking exactly the same thing and they're really relieved that someone else has asked it. So um, let's have a look. Um, Hawaiian D7 with the pinky on the A string, kosher. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Karen. So if you prefer to do the Hawaiian D string, uh, well, Hawaiian D string, Hawaiian D7. This is the Hawaiian D7, 2020. We just mean those numbers refer to the frets I'm playing. Second fret, no fret, second fret, no fret, 2020. But um, yeah, absolutely, Karen. You can add this little finger, um, pinky, or your third finger here is absolutely fine. It's quite nice because it adds that kind of nice C. It, some people don't like it because you get the sound of um, this C against this low C. But I think it's kind of cool. So yeah, that was absolutely acceptable. Yeah, my mantra in life, and, it affect, and it's the same for ukulele as well, if it feels good and it sounds good, it is good. So trust yourself. You've got it. You've got it. Now, as I say, that's so for the solo, we're going to do a blues, um, a blues pattern. And these blues scales, again, they're in your downloadable sheets that you can use every week with all your scales. It's called the reference guide. Um, and I'm going to talk you through it. I'm going to come in on close camera. And I want you to think of it like a shape. Because we're in D, we're going to start with this note here, second fret of the C string. And I'm just picking it with my thumb. That's a D note. Now, normally in the major scale, you, we would hit two frets higher for a whole step. Okay. But we're actually going to go even one higher than that because we like these flatted notes in a blues scale. It's the flatted third if you're into numbers. So we're going to go two to five. Then we're going to come to the third fret of the E string and we're going to do three in a row. Now, if you prefer, you could use your last three fingers like this. For some reason, I find it more comfortable switching out to my index finger there. Then on the A string, you're going to play the third and fifth. So you can practice that. Two, five, three, four, five, three, five. Just sounds like the blues when you play it. If you can get used to these patterns, you can play the blues in any key. Because believe it or not, if I wanted to play blues in the key of E, I'd do exactly the same shape, two frets higher. If 
I wanted to play blues in the key of F, I do the same shape starting from the fifth fret, F. Seventh fret, G. That's the amazing thing about these movable scale shapes. You can take them up the fretboard and it's really empowering because you realise you can play these solos in lots of different keys, which is really cool. Just a couple more tricks, uh, tips and tricks, and then we'll get on with playing it. Um, this blue shape, there's a really nice to, way to break out of it if you feel like you're just going through the motions up and down. And that's to create another rectangle that we can do from five to eight and five to eight on the E string. So A string and E string. So we've got, but we've also got that little triangle. B.B. King used to refer to this shape as the blues rectangle. Which is quite nice. You could do some BB King blues if you like. I once saw a really great documentary on BB King, and he's you know he does all these kind of all that kind of bendy stuff. He's really humble about it. He said the only reason he kind of did a lot of those bends was because all his friends played bottleneck um guitar and he was at no good at playing with a slide or a bottleneck so that was his way of getting the same kind of wobbly sound so just interesting okay so that would sound something like this if if you wanted to give it a go you could do any kind of riff using those notes there i'm breaking Just have a little experiment with that um, if you want to do a little bit of a, of a blues um, solo on this one. Now we're going to do that as the instrumental, but we're going to play that over the chords to the refrain. So if you're just playing along with me without doing a solo, just hit the chords to the refrain there and you'll be absolutely fine. Then we go into this outro, which is the just the verse chords, but with the words say the word love. And if you like, you can keep soloing over that if you like. So yeah. Oh, David, I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> especially on uke. It's all right on guitar, but on uke, the higher you go up the fretboard, those frets, they get smaller and smaller, don't they? <laughs> Absolutely. As always, guys, um, the, you do have the lyrics in your chord if you want to download your version of this. Um, so the lyrics, the lyrics are there if you'd like them. Um, oh, just bear, in, bear me a second. I've done something odd. Let me just come out of that. Ba -ba -ba. Hi guys, hopefully you guys are still there. I'm so sorry, I hit a button on my computer I've never hit before and it went into something called preview mode. I've no idea what that is. Hopefully you're still there. I'm still seeing numbers, so you must be there. Um, if, some, if some of you could just write a little comment just to let me know that I'm back to it and you can hear me and it's all all right. I'm so sorry about that if I disappeared for a few seconds. The look of panic on my face is, is kind of the screen went pause. I don't know what happened there. But anyway, here we go. We're back to it. Um, so, so yeah, you can add that little solo on. Yeah, don't get a few. I thought I'd lost you all for a sec. Um, so you can keep that going over the outro. All right, I think we're good to go, actually. That's pretty much it. In terms of the structure, we're just doing verse which is your classic 12 bar blues, refrain, which is your D, C, F, G bit, verse, refrain, verse, refrain, verse, instrumental, and then refrain at the end. So um, yeah, cool. Let's give it a go, let's give it a go. All right, so, um, and for an intro, let's just hit a D7. Just get this going. Hi, Rebecca, good to hear. Here we go. Say the word. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I forgot. I need the chords back up for anyone that's following them on screen. So sorry. We'll start again. <laughs> what a clarity. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Here we go. Say the word and you'll be free. Say the word and be like me. Have you heard? But now I've got 
got it, the word is good. Spread the word and you'll be free. Spread the word and be like me. Spread the word and pick it all. Have you heard the word is love? It's so fine, sunshine, it's a word. In the good and the bad books that I have read, say the word and we'll be free. Say the word and be like me. Have you heard the word is wrong? Say the word I'm thinking of. It's so fine, sunshine, it's a word. <laughs> well done, everyone. Oh, David, I'm uh, I'm so glad you're hitting some harmonies because I could hit the. I started singing the harmonies and then I realised I should be singing the main vocals. Went down. <laughs> I couldn't get back up again. So, apologies, everyone. That was my own weird version of that song in terms of the melody. But hopefully, you enjoyed it and you got the chords. It's always a funny one foot with the Beatles because I um I love both um Paul McCartney and and um John's vocals and of course George as well. But I'm never sure which one to lock onto when I'm singing and I'm playing live and sometimes I start singing one and I end up being the other. Can't be bad, can it? You start with John and you end up being Paul. They're both great, so it's all good. <laughs> but sorry if that sounded a bit weird. But there you go, uh, a taste of the 12 bar blues there, which is really nice. And all of those chords played as dominant sevenths, something really common um, in music. The, the power of the dominant seventh, and that's just a fancy pants word for a seventh chord. Those dominant seventh chords, they kind of feel unresolved. They want to go somewhere. If you play a D major, it kind of feels like, ah, oh, it's resolved, isn't it? It can just sit there. Whereas if you play a seven, it's like, what? It's like it's asking a question, which I think is um, quite interesting. So um, musicians like the Beatles, they, um, and a lot of blues musicians, Count Basie was a famous one for this. They would replace all the major chords in blues progressions with seventh chords because it just gives it that grittiness. And each chord wants to resolve to another one, so it creates a sense of movement. So that's what's happening there. Just cool, isn't it? And uh, yeah, really neat groove. It's one of my favourite songs from the Beatles. Just absolutely great. Oh, Rubber Soul, what an album. Eh? It's absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Um, so just going to take a, a rest just for a minute. And I just wanted to show you a couple of things. Um, so first off, I'm going to bring this up on screen and then make it smaller so you can still see me, hopefully. So this is just a heads up for anyone that wanted to come to the ukulele retreat but weren't able to because we sold out. Well, the good news is we've had some return tickets. So I've got three left. We had five returns and I've got three left. 
So if anyone wants to come along to our retreat, it's the end of June, so the end of this month. It's crazy. I think it's like three weekends or four weekends away. Just mad. I'm really excited. Um, we've got some of the best tutors coming from around the world to teach here in the Forest of Dean. Um, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of teaching as well on this one. I'm going to be running some sessions, some kind of peelers and all sorts. And it's an intensive two, well, three, I call it a three day really, but it's two full days of teaching. On a Friday, we have some can of capilla and some relaxed welcome drinks. But Saturday and Sunday, are two quite intensive days of teaching where you get to be taught by all of the different tutors. And we've got Jeff Peterson coming all the way from Hawaii, which is just like mind blown. He's coming just for our retreat. I'm really, really over the moon to bring him over. He's a Grammy award winning musician. Um, his um, some of his songs are featured on the soundtrack to the soundtrack to the Descendants, starring um, George Clooney of all people. So amazing artist, and um, he'll be playing slap key and ukulele and teaching ukulele, obviously. Then we've got Sam Muir, who is an absolutely fantastic classical ukulele player. Plays some beautiful things like John Dowland and um, Saw and things like that on the ukulele, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, we've got Phil Dolman, who does a lot of blues and old time, which is going to be absolutely brilliant as always. And everyone loves Phil, such a great tutor. And we've also got Percy Copley, who's come in, and he's going to help out. So for anyone that's kind of beginners and not so confident and is worried about any of the other sessions with any of the other tutors at any moment no one will be offended it's all really friendly you can step out and Percy's going to run, run beginner um, lessons all day so something for everyone which is really exciting and there's also ukulele walks in the forest there's ukulele meditation with me there's live can of capilla, lovely food all all weekend buffets and um, tea and croissants all that sort of goodness which is brilliant and then on Sunday we've got a student's concert um, I'm going to try and record some of it for Facebook live and YouTube live so keep um I'll, I'll put more details on our Facebook group nearer the time um, but just kind of keep an eye on it so I will be broadcasting some of it live so you can you can join in now, one little thing for anyone that can't make it um, and isn't able to get a ticket, um, Jeff Peterson, I'm hoping, and I'm almost entirely sure it's going to happen now, um, which is amazing, he's going to come and guest on the Can of Kapila, the first one in July. So in July, the Can of Kapila, normal time, six o'clock on a Monday evening, we're going to have Jeff Peterson, which is going to be just absolutely brilliant, leading some songs. And if you haven't met her yet, the cow and frog, Esther, who helps create these beautiful sheets for me each week, along with Karen, who does the interesting um, facts. Esther's going to be joining us in this room with, um, with Jeff as well. So it's going to be super exciting. That's going to be the first can of capilla, um, the first Monday in July. So there you go. Some virtual opportunities to get involved, which will be fantastic. Um, there's also a possibility that Jeff will be doing an online concert as well, but I need to check with him about that. So keep posted. Best thing to do is to follow me on Facebook for all this stuff. Um, you can either follow my personal page, which is um, Matt Stead. Just look up Matt Stead ukulele. Or if you look up Matt Stead Students Hangout, that's where we all post videos of the stuff we're learning at these can of capillas and live lessons. One more thing, ever so quickly, then we'll get on that third song, I promise. Just to remind you that in two weeks time, we've got my um, next, uh, sorry, one week time. Um, a week Wednesday we've got my next um, live lesson this one was postponed because my um, internet dropped out and there were some problems in May um, so this one is postponed from May 17th next Wednesday we're going to have um, a lesson on how to learn the fretboard using melody so really simple melodic device to allow you to learn playing all over the fretboard which is going to be really exciting. That's 3.30. We normally do these live lessons every Wednesday at 3.30 um, every two weeks. So we're back on track. Um, and Canna Capilla is back on track as well now. I'm past all my holidays and everything. So from now on, we're just going to be every Monday. So um, yeah, exciting time. So yeah. Uh, one day, Lisa, we'll get you over. We've actually got a couple of people coming from the States, which is just amazing. It's really exciting. Um, so one year, we'll get you over here. I'll, I'll persuade you to come out, which will be brilliant. Thanks, David.
Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, the workshops are, aren't going to be recorded, Angela. Just um, it's it's just I haven't got the capacity to do that this year. But one year I am going to make it online. I, I keep saying I'm going to do it, but um, yeah, we won't be able to record them um, this year. But maybe another time. But uh, yeah, so there we go. So come and come and join in the fun. Right. Let's have a look at our next song. This next one then is really, actually a really pretty um, and simple song. It's by a band called The Magnetic Fields, who are an absolutely amazing outfit. In 1999, they recorded this album called um, 69 Love Songs. And it was 69 songs are over three CDs, one album, just absolutely amazing stuff. Really kind of varied, um, amazing songs. And Stephen Merritt and his um, band, The Magnetic Fields, were really responsible for pushing me into taking up ukulele. So a lot of people get into it through Hawaiian stuff. You know I'm really passionate about Hawaiian music, but that came a little bit later for me. It was the magnetic fields that got me really passionate about ukulele playing. I did a little bit myself, as you know, from the pants thing, from um, being a librarian. I used to do it at story times and things like that. And I used to play a little bit solo in my band. But when I heard um, Stephen Merritt playing it in the magnetic fields, it totally captured my imagination. And I fell in love with them. And this is one of my favourite songs from that album, 69 Love Songs. It's a really, really beautiful, simple song. All Stephen's songs are really, really beautiful. So at the end, I'll tell you a, a daft story about the magnetic fields where I got into trouble at one of their concerts. Just remind me at the end and I'll tell you it's quite funny. Mm. Okay. Sorry, guys. I always get a bit dry and this time of year if I don't take a take some juice. So this one's in the key of G and it's the chords that you'd expect to come up in G. So some of the most common chords in any key are the first, the fourth and the fifth chords. And if we have a look at this first, if I make it bigger, you'll notice, look at it, use your suspects, we start with a one chord G. In this one we have the sixth chord, G, a, B, C, D, E, an E minor chord, and that minor chord introduces a touch of melancholy. When we go from G to E minor, it kind of creates a, a kind of a, a bit of drama in the song, which is really nice. Then we've got the five chord. That creates tension and makes you want to go back to the one chord. The five chord in any key, it always does that. It makes you want to go back to the one chord. And to kind of delay us getting there, we go via the four chord, C, and then we finally go back to G. But I just wanted to show you, loads of you will know this because I do a lot of these tricks each time. When we're playing that G chord, we need to go to an E minor, which is really common one to follow a G chord. Rather than rearranging all your fingers like this, one, two, three, which is a bit of a tough change, isn't it? What you can do is you can just reach up your little finger to the third fret of the C string like this. Okay. So G, E minor, G, E minor. And it works because this finger cancels out this one. So you see, it looks the same as when you do it here. You just end up using three different fingers. So that's a really nice, simple change on that one. Now we're going to keep this nice and light, but guess what? You can see why I put these songs in this order now. We're going to use the same strum pattern. Now if you, if that strum pattern trip you up, just start by doing down strums. Just brushing the nails across the uke, roughly where the body of the uke meets the neck. One and two and three and four. Then if you want to add a little down up, um, halfway along, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 you got it? But, oh, Betty's coming from the States. Of course it is. I forgot. Betty, of course. Yeah, oh man, it's going to be so great to see you, Betty. It's amazing you're coming all the way over. Yeah, perhaps perhaps next year you can fit Karen in your in your suitcase. <laughs> I'll be waiting to do it. Instead of a ukulele, you can bring Karen in your suitcase. How about that? <laughs> Fantastic. Sorry, guys. So, that's our pattern, the same as our other. Our other. 
songs from tonight. Really easy peasy lemon squeezy. There you go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you got it, David. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Then you might have two of those. One measure of D. one just so you can get the idea. You are a splendid butterfly. It is your wings that make you beautiful. And I could make you fly away. But I could never make you stay. Let me have another one. You said you were in love with me. Um, I was massively into this um, album when I went to America. So if anyone's been to Kansas, there's loads of really long straight roads through Kansas. And this song reminds me of driving up to Kansas City with the lights in the background. Just, just beautiful, beautiful. Um, chorus now. So the chorus is, if anything, it's even more simple than the, um, than the verse. And notice we've got five four, one. The five chord makes you want to go back to the one chord, but we have the four in the middle just to lengthen it out, basically. So that means we have D, C, and then G. Now, most courses, we do that four times. The last one, um, we're going to do five times, all right? And that will sound like this. Not for all the tea in China Not if I could sing like a bird Not for all North Carolina Not for all my little birds Not if I could write a song The sweetest song you've ever heard Doesn't matter what I simple really beautiful isn't it really lovely and by the way on the um on the sheet because this one has butterflies in the words um which is another reason i love it um i sent esther some pictures of some butterflies i took this spring so um i'm gonna do a quiz for you all see if anyone by the end of today can work out what butterflies those are and i'll tell you at the end <laughs> they're quite obscure british butterflies so but i'll i'll talk, I'll, I'll give them to you at the end so that's the structure. Now, if um, if you'd like to solo along for this one, after the first chorus, we're going to do an interlude, which is basically like the verse again, but with two of the G E minor bits. For this one, because we're in the key of G, we're going to solo using the G major pentatonic uh, major pentatonic scale and the E minor pentatonic scale. Believe it or not, both of those scales are the same notes, just in a different order. Every major key has a minor equivalent. Sorry, guys, I'm just going to get this out of my Has a minor equivalent, which has all the same notes. So all of the notes that make up E minor are the same as the notes that make up G major. Indrani, this is your moment. That G major pentatonic played one note at a time is the start of my girl. I got sunshine. <laughs> so that's that's how um, commonly it is used. Let me go through those notes. So we're starting from the C string again. The reason we tend to start from the C string on all of these scales is because it's the lowest note on a high G ukulele. So it allows you to go from low to high. This one we're going right up to the seventh fret of the C string. Then we're playing the ninth fret. Going back to seven again to the 10th fret, back to 7 and 10. 
Little gap. Big gap. Big gap. And you can play those in any order. And you can get a nice rudimentary solo. Remember, try and think in terms of phrasing. So just do a few notes at a time. You don't have to make it too complicated. So it's something really, really gentle can sound really pretty. Now, if you want to extend that scale out, you can also do the E minor pentatonic, which is the fourth fret of your C string, up to seven. So like a big gap that time, followed by a little gap, five to seven, five to seven, four, seven, five, seven, five, seven. Again, that's in your sheet. You can follow the link in the description. You could join them up. So on and so forth, just mucking about there, but it just gives you a bit of an idea. So if you if you want to have a go at that, um, that comes after the first chorus. So yeah, I love. <laughs> Do you know what this one of Stephen Merritt's? He's so quirky the songwriting. I love it. I love that bit. Unboyfriendable. I think it should be in the dictionary. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely great. Really witty. Some of them are really visceral. Some of his songs, but mostly kind of beautiful and melancholic. We did uh, the Book of Love, didn't we, a few um, few few months ago, which was really really lovely. So this one, first chorus interlude, first chorus. Just remember that last chorus; it goes on an extra line, and just keep it really really simple. Nice light drums, and just enjoy it. Should we give it a go? Let's give it a go. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play the verse through once as a as an introduction. Okay, here we go. One, two, three.
you made me want to die. You tell me that you're a boyfriend to boy, that I could make you pay a but I could never make you stay. Sing like a bird, not for all North Carolina, not for all my little ones, not if I could write for you. The sweetest song you ever heard, doesn't matter what I do, not for all my little ones, doesn't matter what I For all my little words. Isn't that a sweet little song? Absolutely brilliant. A beautiful album that is. Absolutely gorgeous. And uh, the songs are so quirky and well thought out. And oh, some of them are just beautiful as well. The Book of Love. Um, Papa Was a Rodeo. Oh, it's just absolutely amazing. Opens the whole album with a song called... Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's um, absolutely cuckoo. It's all about um, running around the yard like a chicken with his head cut off. <laughs> all around the barnyard, falling in and out of love. Just absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Actually, that might be a different song. That might be the third one. Anyway, it's absolutely, absolutely cracking album. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you'd like to um, check that out, 69 Love Songs and the Magnetic Fields, they've released many, many more albums since then. And they're just absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Oh, I completely forgot. Yeah, of course. Indrana's in um, Sardinia. She's been posting some beautiful photos from out there. Gorgeous place, gorgeous place. I think she's on her way back, but obviously not back in Germany quite yet. So, um, yeah, there we go. Well, North Carolina, um, Esther's asking, what's so special about it? I think it's quite beautiful. <laughs> so, yeah, perhaps someone can chip in and help that one. To be honest, I think it just rhymed quite well with the line before. <laughs> I think that's the main reason why it's in there, to be honest. He does a lot of that one. There's a lovely one called Washington, D.C. It's good enough for me, or whatever it is. It's a brilliant song anyway. Right, that's before we do Dream a Little Dream, which is our people's choice. Um, every week now, we're going to choose a song from an earlier can of Kapila, um, for us to go over again. And um, we're going to do Dream a Little Dream. But before we do that, let's do one more um, that we missed out at the start, which is a great song by the Smiths. Uh, the Smiths? Not by the Smiths. The Shins called New Slang, which is absolutely um, another cracking indie song. Then we'll do a bit of Mama Cass to, to finish off. Now, this one, I realised, and this is my bad, Esther, I didn't spot it when we were doing the sheets, that um, there's a slight mistake. And Esther, as always, this isn't your fault. I actually got, got it wrong in the sheets that I sent you. So I'm going to correct it on the screen. Hopefully I can do this. Um, if I can bring on my iPad, I'll show you where it is and I'll see if we can um, fix it. Let me just see if I can find the right sheet. There it is. Okay, so let's see if this works and brings it up on the screen. Yes, that's good. Okay, excellent. So there's one change I need you to make, make, on, your, make on your sheets. Now, don't worry if um, you're not able to do this now, if you're following the download sheets, but I'll kind of, I'll talk you through it. Um, give me one second. Just going to turn that off. Is that not working? Let me see. Ah, there we go. It's working now. Okay, good. So this measure here, what I'd like to do, um, why is that not working? Sorry, guys. I'll have to do it with my fingers. I'd like you to put in an extra F just here. So that measure there, it's the, it's the verse. Just before that C, there's an extra F. That's all it is. I'll talk you. I'll talk you through it when we get there. But just so you can see it on your sheets, if you want to scribble it in, just one that I completely missed out for some reason. It's completely my bad. So there's actually two measures of F on the measure before and two measures here. But I'll talk you through it as well. So yeah, there we go. 
Uh, <laughs> Esther, I'll tell you it at the end. <laughs> I'll tell you it at the end. Oh, I'll tell you quickly. It's only it's only a quick story. It's a bit daft, really. It's not even not even that funny. I've probably talked it up now. But we went to see uh, me and Sharon went to see the magnetic stones when we when we were courting back in the day, and um, Sharon was wearing luminous green tights we both for some reason we went for a stage of both wearing really bright clothes and um, I just kind of loved the brightness and the happiness of wearing really bright clothes so she was wearing a luminous green tights and um, about halfway through this after the interval halfway through the concert um, as happens occasionally to me I desperately needed to use the facilities so I disappeared out went and used the facilities um, came back and it was pitch black so the band was playing and they're playing one of my favourite songs that I didn't want to miss and it was one of um, one of the songs that's quite romantic for me and Shaz so I kind of raced back to my seat as quickly as I could sat down saw these bright green tights put my leg on the tights turned my head looked over and I thought I'll, I'll give Sharon a kiss just as I turned my face to her, I realised that it wasn't Sharon's face at all. And I'd sat next to some other random girl who was also wearing bright green luminous tights, exactly the same one as Sharon. Thankfully, she saw the funny side. She didn't slap me or, or call security. She held my hand and then just burst out into laughter. And I had to apologise and say, sorry, we're three, three rows behind. I didn't actually tell Sharon that that had happened until the end of <laughs> till the end of the concert but yeah so there we go it's lucky i wasn't thrown out of uh, i think that was royal festival hall in london um that's my magnetic field story <laughs> okay right oh onwards and upwards enough for, enough of my silly reminiscing let's have a look at this song by the sheep let's here we go cool here we go now this one um we're going to do straight eights for this so even simpler strums for this you know those downs we did before? We're just going to do that all the way through this song. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. That's it. That's as simple as it gets with this one. And that's not me simplifying things. That's what the guitar does. It's really, really simple but beautiful in this song. The chords, we're in the key of A minor now. So A minor is the one chord. So you can think of A minor as the one and count up to your other chords. So for instance, A minor C, A, B, C, and so on and so forth. But I think for this one, because we're far, quite away through the um, evening and I'm, I'm kind of conscious of the time, let's just crack on with the chords and not worry too much about the Nashville numbers, because I think you can follow them relatively simple on this one. So I'm just going to make it slightly bigger if I can. I always go the wrong way, don't I? There we go. Okay. So notice that in some of these um, boxes, in fact, in most of them, the chords are, there's two in a measure. So that means there's going to be two on an A minor, two on a C, for instance. One and two and one and two and. So if you're strumming those quick down strums, each one of those is going to be half a B. One and two and. That's the way to count it, OK? So the first bit we have one and two and C and two and F and two and C and two and G and two and C and two, A minor, two and G and two, and then finally C and a yes. So it's quite a lot of quick chord changes, but thankfully the chords are nice and simple. All right. So that gives us our intro. I'm going to speed it up ever so slightly. And two and three and four. A minor. C, F, C, G, C, A minor, G. Okay. Now that first line we play four times actually before we hit that final C. And it will sound something like this. Come, have a, have a sing along with me. Just hum along with me. It's a beautiful melody line. Thank you. 
things. So not too, not too bad once you get into it. Now the verses, remember I made that little change here, that F on the um, on the first line of the verse. We're playing another F or a half a measure there. In fact, I'll keep this one up. I know you can't see me for a minute, but I'll keep this one up. So the verse, we have a minor for four, one and two and three and four and. Then we have two C's, two F's, another two F's, two C's, and then it finally rests on the G. So it sounds like this. I'll keep it on screen just for a minute. A minor, C, F, F, C, G, and then C, F, A minor, and G. Okay. So try and write that um, that uh, F in on your sheet. If you haven't got it, just try and remember it's there. All right, so in front of the C. So that will make the verses sound something like this. You can give it a try. One, two, three, four. Go team, anarchists for this town. We're all in my... Sorry, <laughs> I, I didn't do the extra F. One and two and three and four. And go team, anarchists for this town. We're all in my mouth. Oh, one third time lucky. I'm so sorry, guys. One, two, three, four. Gold teeth, anarchists for this town. We're all in my mouth. Only I don't know how they got out. Something like that. Hopefully I got that right the third time. You can see even us teachers make mistakes. Let that be a lesson for you. Let me go again. I'll try one more just to check it works. One, two, three, four. Turn me back into a bed. I was when we met. I was happier than with no mindset. Okay. So it just goes round and round like that the choruses. Again, it takes a little bit getting used to because of those quick changes. A bit weird, but I think it's what gives the, this song this really interesting, unusual rolling quality. The chorus isn't too bad because we've got the G to C and then there's just lots of F to Cs. So we have G, two, three, four, C. Quick F C. Then it rests on G. We basically do it again. Same again. G. One more and your G. So that sounds like this. One, two, three. And if you turn to me like, turn me like, good girl, takes to the wind. go round and round. Now this one we've got two instrumentals. Now instead of doing the actual instrumental from the song I thought I'd keep it simple. So we're just going to do the intro part again and you can either solo using the G major pentatonic and the E minor pentatonic. That's the one we just did. Just a super quick reminder this time. Okay so that would be 7, 9, 7, 10, 7, 10 or Four seven, five seven, five seven. So you can do a little solo to that if you like, or if you prefer, you can sing the oohs and the ahs at the intro again, which is actually my favourite part of the song. So I'm glad we've put that in a few times. So anytime it says instrumental, just play the intro part, and if you want, you can try a solo. If not, just hum along with me, and I, I think you'll in, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, and that's mostly it. Now there's only one other thing to tell you about. The last chorus, we play this line twice. 
It's another thing I forgot to tell Esther and it's my bad. So the very last chorus, this line here, C, G, F, C, G, we play twice. Hopefully you'll get an idea when we get there and I'll try and tell you. Um, in fact, let's just have a, have a go. I'll show you what I mean. One, two, three. I'm looking on the good love. twice basically you know, you'll get it i think as, as we go so that line twice and then the rest of it we play out i know i'm rushing this one a bit guys but i think um i think i really wanted to just have a have a little go oh and you're finger picking it lisa beautiful i love it gorgeous gorgeous brilliant guys oh we'll give you the answers of the quiz after this as well so uh, i'll get i'll get esther to give the answers of the quiz we've got a fun maze rather than uh, uh, a rebus at the end of this one should we give it a go sorry i'm rushing it i just realized the time and i want to get i want to get dream a little dream in before the end as well so let's just give it a go no worries amanda you take you take care good to see you again good to see you okay here we go so intros first one two three
all cut their thumbs and bleed into their bones till they melt away. Looking at the good life by my reasons and never finds without a trust. song. Sorry if I didn't do it justice. I might have got the words a little bit wrong here and there. What is it? Um, it's, uh, it was the notes he used to say, wasn't it, that Eric Morecambe? But I'm going to say the words. I got all the right words, just not necessarily in the right order. <laughs> but there you go. It's a brilliant song. And the Shins, they were the band that, that, that did the, um, the cover version of the words that I was telling you. So that's kind of interesting. Complete fluke, or maybe it's in my subconscious. Um, that's from 2001, their album O Inverted World, and it's one of my favourite albums of all time. Really subtle, beautiful kind of acoustic, um, acoustic electric pop, just really beautifully done. Really beautiful kind of poetic lines and all sorts. So yeah, lo lovely song that one, isn't it? I love that kind of oohs and ahs at the start as well, which is really, really gorgeous. Um, no worries, An Angela, I don't know if I saw you before you went, but you take, you take care. Good, good to see you again. Um, that's that's really really kind. Um, I saw a message coming in from um, from John here. I'm going to put it on screen. Thanks, John. That's really really heartwarming um, to hear. I really really appreciate that. Um, Phil's been super kind. He's a, he's a good friend and a brilliant brilliant musician, and he sent quite a lot of people um, my way, um, which is super kind. So that's really lovely to hear, John. Things like that. It kind of it gives me a big head, but it makes me happy. And it makes makes it all worthwhile. Makes me want to want to keep going. <laughs> so thank you. I really really appreciate that, guys. So um, yeah, definitely. Phil's a Phil's a good guy, isn't he? So um, that's it. That's it. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, it's brilliant, brilliant. Um, Phil's. If you're into, you probably already know this, John. Um, but um. If you're just kind of starting to get into these Nashville numbers and kind of how it works. Our man Phil actually has a brilliant book. Um, I'm just seeing if I have it in my book rack behind me. I might do. Uh, it's called How Songs Work, and it's just absolutely fantastic. Um, give me a sec, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can grab it. Just show you because it's really great. Right here, but here. Yeah, here we go. So um, Phil's got these um, great two great two books actually. Um, one called How Music Works, which goes into a lot of the circle of fifth stuff that we do in Nashville numbers. Um, so it kind of breaks down how that works. And this one, if you really into Canicopila and you want a bit more of the theory side, obviously there's only so much I can do during the sessions. This is an amazing book uh, where it goes into a lot of detail explaining how these um, these systems work. There's the backwards around the circle of fifths thing we did when we looked at the... Um, George Gershwin's song and things like that. So I highly recommend this. It's called Understanding Chord Progressions on the Ukulele. He'll probably have a few of these at the retreat for sale if anyone's come in. So um, you can get a hard copy then. But it's all it's all on his website as well, Phil Dom. And I can't remember his website off by heart, but if you um if you Google Phil Dom and Ukulele, it will come up. So two amazing books that come really highly um, highly recommended and the companion piece to them if i can grab one more book quickly 
I'm going to do a bit of selling for my stuff now. <laughs> I'm not very good at selling generally. Um, is my reference book. So Phil's books tell you how to do it. And my reference book gives you all the materials to do it. So in here, we've got all the different scales, um, scales that you could ever need all over the fretboard. These um, kind of shapes that I'm always going on about for scales, um, for, for learning them all over the fretboard. Um, it's, it, I, I've never come across a book that does them like this. So I decided to write one myself, basically, with my friend John. So we've, we've kind of had, put the scales both as shapes with the little blues notes notated in different colours and things like that, but also all over the fretboard. But my favourite bit of this book is all the chords going up the fretboard. So if you like playing chords at the dusty end, this has got that all in. And it's got the circle of fifths, it's got all um, understanding to read music, all sorts of stuff in it as well. And that's available by the website, um, from my website, theukraine.com, and on my teaching website, mattstayukulele.com. Okay, enough selling. Last one. Right. <laughs> I really wanted to get this, sneak this one in before the end. So this is our people's choice, this last one. And the chords are quite tricky in this, but it's really, it's a really brilliant, brilliant song. Um, dream a little dream of me. Um, of course, we, we've we've attributed it to Mama Cass on our sheets from the Mamas and Papas. She actually recorded this solo just after the Mamas and Papas broke up. Um, but really, it goes back to Ozzy Nelson. I've written it down in 1935, he wrote this. So it's a really, really old trad jazz song. Absolutely beautiful. The chords in it are fantastic. It's actually in two different keys. So the Nashville numbers um, are in two different two different. Um, Two different keys for this one so first in the key of c then when it goes to the bridge it goes to the key of a so again um because we're running a little bit short of time i'll go over the chords rather than the nashville numbers and you can just follow them along if you struggle to play this one just kind of take it all in and have a go at the chords afterwards slowly in your own time and see if you can start to build them up because they are quite tricky in this but i'll talk you through it as we go um, Betty, I'll have some hard copies of my book, and um, Phil will have some of his there as well. So when you're at the retreat, um, we'll have some, we'll have a merch table. Of course, Sam and Percy and um, and Jeff, I'm sure we'll have stuff as well. So, so, so um, yeah, have a look at the merch table when you're here, and you can get one. So you can stick them in your suitcase on the way back. Um, might mean you can't take Karen back in your suitcase. <laughs> Okay, so let's have a look at these chord shapes on Dream Little Dream. Absolutely brilliant, beautiful chords. First one, we've got C. Now you could play C here. I quite often like to play this C up here, like a B flat, but two frets higher. B flat, B, C. The reason I like that is that the B7 that comes next, you can just drop those fingers back. But you can also go from C. B, B7 is just 4, 3, 2. It's like an E minor moved up towards your nose. Then we've got the trickiest chord of the whole piece, an A flat. It's basically an F chord. Your finger is taking the place of the nut for your ukulele. So instead of being F, because our finger basically acts like a capo, we have F sharp. G, G sharp, which is also known as A flat. So that's the shape, like an F, but that bar. Now that's quite tricky. And then it goes back to G, which you can do barred as well if you want to. So that would be. Stars shining bright above you. Now there's also another little way you can do it to make it way easier. Stars shining bright. If you just strum the bottom three strings with your thumb on this next chord, you can just take a G shape and move it up to three and four, and then just pull it back. So that makes it easier. Stars shining bright above you. Whoops, I went too far then because I'm looking on the screen. All right. Stars shining bright above So that can make it a little bit easier. 
All right. Now, did you notice there, I did something interesting for my strumming. I love to do a, what I call my painted thumb and strum on this one. The first strum I use my thumb and I give it quite a strong, warm push down with my thumb. The next strum, the offbeat, I like to strum with the nails of this hand. And you get this 3D, warm, brittle, warm, cold. Gives this nice star shining bright above. Almost like a jazz comping way of doing it, which is really nice. So have a little try on, on that with this, uh, with this one. It sounds super, super sweet. Okay, so let's have a look at the next bit. Next bit, if you read Phil's book, <laughs> um, you can you'll know that next bit is like a backwards round the circle of fifths pattern. Again, to to run out of time to explain that, but I'll just show you the chords. C, E seven. Whoops, sorry. An A major, two one zero zero. Take that finger off for A7. Okay, two of each. One, two, one, two, A, two, A7. Then we've got the four chord, always creates a bit of change. F, four of those. F minor. And then we've got C, that A flat again. And remember, you can do it like this, if it's easier. Thanks, Esther. Yeah, I've got a Uke Theory course of all this um, theory stuff explained in a sequential course on YouTube. So, um, John, if you like my beginner's course, check that out. You might quite enjoy it. It's a bit more rough and ready than the beginner's because it was one of the first ones I ever did. So it's a bit me sat in my spare room with a, with a chalkboard, but hopefully you'll enjoy it. It's lots of good stuff in there. So that's, that's your verses. Let's try one. Let's try them really slowly. I'll stay in on, um, stay in on close cam. Two, three, four. Stars shining bright above you. Night breezes seem to whisper, I love you. Birds singing in the sycamore tree. Dream a little dream of me. Got a cheeky G7, there we go again. Say 99 and kiss me. Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me. This time, C, dream a little, quick A flat G, dream of me, and then E7. Now, I promise not to go into too much fear with this one because we're running out of time, but that E7 is really interesting. That E7 is five above the A major, which starts the next section, and it's so key because that E7 wants to resolve to an A because it's five above it, it's backwards around the circle of fifths. If I count up from A, A, B, C, D, E. So an E7 always wants to resolve to an A. So it's a way of linking these two sections together and jumping from one key to the next. So the next is a, one of the most common jazz patterns, again, so we've got a one, six, two, five. Notice the Nashville numbers there at the top, one, six, two, five, and it happens again and again and again. And that's all there is to this section, apart from the very last bit. It's pretty much the same thing again. So we've got an A chord, which is just two, one, zero, zero. F sharp minor sounds difficult, but you just need one extra finger here, second fret of the E string. B minor seven sounds tough, but just bar the whole of that second fret. You can actually strengthen it with another finger if you want. I sometimes do. And then E7. We just do that one again. So one, six, two, five. Stars fading, but I linger on, dear. Still craving your kiss. Do 
for mortars. I'm longing to linger till dawn, dear. And then this time we start the same. Just saying. But this time you go to an A flat. Remember, you can play it like this. This. And that G chord. What chord is G5 above? C, D, E, F, G. The G chord makes you want to go to C, which takes you back there. Stars shining higher. Back to that section. So it's the, yeah, Dave has got it right. Secondary dominant chord. It sets up the next section. Beautiful, right? Really, really cool. Now, if you want to solo on this one, you can use the um, C major pentatonic scale again. Keep Dead simple, you can just play your dots. So let's see if I can bring that up quickly. That would sound something like this. Just literally play my dots. So that could be a really fun thing. If you fancy having a go at a little solo, have a little try. Again, I know I'm rushing this, guys. I'm so sorry, but I just want to make sure we get it in before the end because it's a great, isn't it? It's just like classic ukulele song. I think these songs from the 30s fit so well on ukulele because, of course, the 1930s was the, the kind of the second wave of ukulele, the big boom of um, mainland ukulele uh, playing in the States. So it fits so well, 30s songs on ukulele. It just sounds great. Let's give that a go then. So in terms of what happens, we just go verse, verse, bridge. OK, so notice that we've got that first and second ending of the verse, then the bridge. Then we've got an interlude solo. We're just going to do the verse again. All right. Then another verse, bridge, verse. So two verses, bridge. In effect, two verses. The first one's instrumental, then bridge. And then we finish with one more verse. All right, so let's give it a try. I think for this one, I'm going to stay on close cam because I think then, oh, I can't. It seems to disappear my close cam. So that's weird. I don't know why that's disappeared. Oh, well, I'll, I won't do that then. <laughs> I'll, start, 